Hi. Uh, for those of you who don't already know this, my mom passed away about a month ago. And although I've always been really kind of fascinated with the subjects of death and of dying, it really got me interested in what happens after you die. Um, I grew up in a largely Catholic community, so I had always been taught that if you do good things in your life, you go to a physical place called heaven, and if you do bad things in your life, you go to a physical place called hell. And then as I grew up, and I learned a little bit more about uh, evolutionary biology, and about theology, and about physics, I realized that there was almost certainly not a place called heaven or a place called hell in a physical sense uh, in, the, in the way that the Christian Bible tells you. Now I don't know if it was because my mom just died, or if it was because I used to be uh, largely vocal about this position of atheism, or if it was just happenstance, but for whatever reason, one of my customers brought me in a book called Proof of Heaven, A Neurosurgeon's Journey into the Afterlife by Dr. Evan Alexander. I read Dr. Alexander's book pretty quickly, and I determined that it was uh, the exact explanation of a DMT dump. Now you see, uh, DMT, or dimethyltryptamine, is a chemical found in many plant and animal species. Um, but higher doses of DMT are ingested either through smoking or through drinking the psychedelic uh, tea ayahuasca. They cause profound psychedelic effects that are akin to what is often referred to as talking to God. Now, whether the experience of interdimensional travel is something that is just a hallucination occurring in your head, or if uh, these compounds really allow you to be able to do that, is something that I explore much more deeply in my uh, recent book, Chris Rice on Culture. But in either instance, the experience of communicating with God feels very, very real. But uh, perhaps most curiously of all, DMT is also uh, an endogenous neurochemical, which means that it is pr produced inside of your brain, or more specifically, produced inside of your pineal gland in your head. Now, as many people are aware, your muscles relax when you pass away, um, and this is responsible for post-mortem erections, um, uh, bowel movements, and even urination. What many people are not aware of, however, is the theory that when you die, your brain also excretes uh, all of your remaining neurochemicals. Now, among many others, that would include serotonin, melatonin, and their close relative, dimethyltryptamine. If this is truly the case, there would be two possible scenarios within the neurochemical dump theory. The first possibility is that suddenly, all at once, all of your neurochemicals are just released due to a relaxing of blood vessels within your brain. Now, I would imagine that within nonviolent deaths, this would almost certainly not be the case. Instead, I propose what I believe to be a much more likely scenario, and that's that your brain produces uh, an evenly dispersed, just regularly dispersed amount of uh, the neurochemicals until there's no more electrical stimulation occurring within your brain. In the second scenario, uh, sight and sound from the external world would of course be the first things to go. Because of this, your brain would produce a very deeply relaxed, very meditative kind of state through the release of such neurochemicals as serotonin, endorphins, acetylcholine, uh, melatonin, cortisol, dopamine, at which point the DMT experience setting in would be uh, a welcome dream. Speaking of dreams, have you ever felt as though you were so deep within a dream? Uh, as though you had been in that little world inside of your head for hours and hours, and then you realize you had only just barely dozed off? When we take into account that a legal medical death occurs when your heart stops and when you stop breathing, and that presently there's uh, no information about how, how long your brain continues to release chemicals after you die, or how long your brain has electrical stimulation after you die. And finally, that uh, DMT and melatonin, which is produced within your brain when you're dreaming, are closely related. It begins to seem very, very possible that uh, this is, in fact, the case. Now, if, if those five minutes where you barely dozed off felt as though they were hours, imagine what literal hours, or, or even days, could feel like months, years, it could even feel like eternity. Our frame of reference as far as time is concerned is uh, just best suited for us to navigate uh, life on this planet. In the grand scheme of things, the Earth is 4.6 billion years old and an ant's lifespan is less than two months. Now uh, those two months to an ant may feel uh, like the average 80 years that a human being lives. In this way, proof of heaven and other near-death experiences seem entirely possible. Maybe when you're so close to death, uh, in a coma, for instance, as Dr. Alexander, who wrote that book, was, 
your brain dumps the remaining DMT and gives you the experience of heaven or hell or as ayahuasca has been shown to do both. But your heaven or your hell would be entirely dictated by your own conscience, your own uh, neurochemistry. You would quite literally feel the infinite vast afterlife in the most negative or positive way based on how you perceive your actions within life. I can only hope that the recent gunman in Santa Barbara, despite his very limited sense of right and wrong, did, in fact, experience a neurochemical hell. If this neurochemical dump does occur, as I'm suggesting, and as many people have uh, suggested in the past, it's almost assuredly uh, very similar to an ayahuasca experience, which lasts for hours and hours. Uh, in this case, even if your life consisted of nothing but horror stories and dark shit, um, you're going to be able to deal with all of that in your mind and eventually be uh, uplifted to a place of peace and tranquility, much in the same way that ayahuasca heals the souls of people who uh, have alcoholism or PTSD or uh, depression. Heaven, hell, it might all just be one big long neurochemical dream in which we come to terms with whatever our life was about or, or whatever our life should have been about as we drift off into that infinite silence. It is the question of why, how, what, if anything, happens after we die that we should be exploring.